Welcome to Mile High Speed RC Garage, everyone. Today we're going to be talking about gearing, a gearing 101 class, if you will. Here on the channel, we believe knowledge is power, so we like to do deep dives, but if you're one of those people who likes to get in and out, well, here you go. Gear up to go fast. Watch out for your heat in your electronics. Gear down for more acceleration and torque. Watch out for your drivetrain components. There you go. That's a wrap. You're off, free to go. For those that want to understand the logic surrounding that, well, hang around and let's get stuck in on gearing. So the first thing you got to know is that your car has a lot of gears that make up what's called its final drive ratio, which is basically just how many times your wheels will turn for every turn of the motor. But today we're only going to talk about two of those gears, which is the pinion gear and the spur gear. And the first thing you got to know about these two guys is that they need to be compatible with each other in their pitch and their modulus. Their what? Their pitch and modulus are just two fancy terms for how we measure gears. And we have two of them because RC cars come from all over the world, and just like centimeters and inches, we're left with having to deal with two different units of measure. No big deal, but it is handy to have a conversion chart laying around. Here's a quick look at what some of these pitch and modulus look like in terms of gear size. First, we've got uh, 48 pitch here. We've got 32 pitch here. 0.8 mod for these guys. This is 0.6 mod and finally one mods. You can see that basically the bigger the gears get, the stronger they are so they can handle more powerful cars. Whereas the smaller gears allow you more teeth, which allows you more gearing options and ratios. So you need to make these two compatible with each other and you can't intermix them, except for one exception. When you go back to our conversion chart, I want you to take a look at 32 pitch and 0.8 mod. These two pitches and modulus are so close together that you can use these interchangeably. There's a lot of debate out there about that, but I've been doing this for years and mixing these two pitch and modulus with no issues at all. Okay, so you've bought some new gears and they're compatible in pitch and modulus and you want to drop them in your car and gear up and gear down and you want to know what's going to happen. Well, first we have to talk about what is gear up and gear down. What are high gears and low gears? When we're talking about high gears and low gears, gearing up and down, what we're really saying is we're changing the ratio of the number of teeth on the spur gear versus the pinion gear. When we gear up, when we go to high gears, we bring that ratio closer to one to one, meaning the teeth count between the two is more similar. Given that the spur is generally bigger, that means the pinion gear is going to increase in size. When we gear down, the opposites are true. We're making that ratio more divergent, meaning separating the teeth count. And the ratios become something more like four to one or five to one. And again, because of the size of the spur gear, the pinion gear becomes small. So those are the characteristics of the high gears and low gears. But now let's turn to something we're all more familiar with, which is our bicycle, for a visual of what's actually taking place mechanically because of those characteristics. Okay, so I've set up a standard 24 speed bicycle in its highest gear, meaning three and eight on your triggers, so 24th gear. This is your high speed gear. I want you to look at this blue tape and I want you to also focus on the cranks and how far the cranks go around for how far the wheel goes around. So as you can see, it's about one quarter of a turn for my legs on the cranks to get the tire and the wheel to go fully around one time. Now let's compare that to the low speed setting where the triggers are set to one and to one, which means I'm in gear one, which is low speed. And again, watch that blue tape. Watch the cranks. Going all the way around, there's one. Let's call it just one and a half, as close as we can. So at low, we're, our legs have to go one and a half times around versus one quarter of the way around in the high gear. 
So in the low gear, my legs have to do six times the amount of work to get that tire to rotate one time around. Let's move away from the bicycle and get back to the world of RC and you'll notice I've marked these gears with red tape. And this is a high gear scenario where the teeth count is pretty similar, closer to one to one. This is a large pinion gear. And you'll notice that for one rotation of this pinion gear or the motor, I'm gonna get about five eighths of a turn on the spur gear. Now when I gear down and take a smaller pinion gear with less teeth and a more divergent gear ratio, like four or five to one here, I'm getting about, for the one turn of the motor, that pinion gear about a quarter of the way around. So really I've got five eighths versus a quarter, so five eighths versus two eighths. So this pinion gear is going to have to go two and a half times around, more times around, than the high gearing scenario. This mechanical phenomenon that you've just witnessed from high gear to low gear affects your car in two critical ways. It affects the performance of your vehicle and it affects the components of your vehicle. Let's take a look at performance first. I'm in the high gear now. And I want you to watch the blue tape on that wheel as I spin it. And I want you to see how fast that rear wheel can spin in high gear. Now let's compare that to how fast it goes in low gear. And again, keep your eye on the blue tape and look at the speed difference. So my arms can only go so fast and it's similar for both sets of gears. But in the high gear scenario, since I get more movement out of that rear tire for every movement of my arms, my ultimate speed is higher. And this is your first performance impact. In the low gear, I simply cannot achieve that same ultimate high end speed. But now let's take a look at something else. I want you to watch how long it takes me to get up to speed. So starting here in the high gear, I am still building, 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 building up, building up, building up, and I'm finally up to speed about now. Compare that to low gearing. Watch this, here I start, boom, I'm already up to speed, almost instantaneously. So the obvious implication there is that in high gear, I accelerate very slow. It takes me a while to get up to speed. Whereas in low gear, that acceleration happens instantaneously and I get up to speed almost immediately. I've also just witnessed torque, which is a term for how quickly and efficiently the power moved through the drivetrain and the wheel and down to the ground. And that makes up our third performance impact. You can see that in low gear, that power transfer is instantaneous. I have tons of torque in the low gear. In high gear, it takes me a while to get that power transfer to happen and it's inefficient, it's difficult. So there's the impacts to your car. Low gear, you have a much lower top end speed. You get to that speed quicker, meaning greater acceleration because you have instant power and lots of torque. That torque's gonna help you drive through all kinds of crazy terrain like thick grass, mud and snow and climb hills and do wheels. In high gear, everything flips. You have a much higher ultimate top end speed, but it takes you longer to get there. You have less acceleration. You have less torque, which means you're not gonna be able to drive as efficiently through those terrains. Now let's talk about that second major category of impact, which is to your components, namely the electronics and your drivetrain. Let's talk about electronics first. So I've got the bike set back to its high gear setting, but this time I want you to watch how hard it is for me to push that. Okay, probably the giveaway there is watch my body. Watch how I have to lean in, use my hips, use my whole body to get that to turn. There's a lot of resistance here. Compare that to the bike in the low gear setting. And look how easy this is. I can do it with one finger. I could do it with my pinky. There is almost zero resistance here. I can just kind of flick that crank and let it flow really freely. 
zero resistance. So what does all this resistance have to do with your electronics? Well, think of your motor as my legs in this scenario. And as the motor in encounters more resistance, it's going to ask for more power from the battery, which has to transfer through the ESC to the motor in this electrical loop that we have. And the more power, the more energy that moves and electricity that moves through the system, the more heat is generated. And heat degrades your electronics, and in worst case scenario, can catch things on fire and truly degrade your entire car. This has never happened to me, so the footage supplied here is via Kevin Talbot. I hope he doesn't mind me sharing. That's the worst case scenario, but it also more commonly will just drain your battery quicker and lower your run times. And this increased demand can also sort of trick your ESC into going into low voltage cutoff. Um, that's a little more complicated story, but in the end, this is, this is a result of that increased resistance on your system. Gearing down on the flip side reduces that re resistance on your electronics, which allows longer run times out of the battery, less power going through, so less heat and less load on your electronics. However, you can take this too far. If you gear down too low, basically it's going to make it too easy for you to get to top speed and you're going to end up squeezing the trigger full throttle for 90% of your run, which means all those positives just got negated because you're blasting your car at full speed and <laughs> sucking the power out of the battery and putting heat in the electronics again. The other negative is that we know that gearing down reduces all that resistance, which means you have a tremendous amount of torque, which basically in a powerful motor just takes all that motor's power and pushes it through the drivetrain instantaneously which puts a tremendous load on those gears and those components and you can damage them. So as you can see gearing up or gearing down is basically just a balancing act of how you want your car to perform and how you want the impact to your car's components. Each decision you make from high gear to low gear on the characteristics has an impact to the performance of your vehicle and subsequently to the components of your vehicle. And you just need to find the right combination that suits you and your driving style. Thanks for tuning in everyone. I hope this helps you understand your gearing a little better and helps you enjoy the hobby a little bit more.